and then on the end you had whatever type of ammunition. This way it's all fixed together. It's one step to put that down the barrel of the cannon. You could also have separate ammunition where you have the powder bag separate from the sabot and whatever projectile you're using. Number three has quite a few different jobs. Uh, you'll see probably her holding up her thumb there. That is because that's the first job. She's going to be using that thumb stall, basically a one finger glove, to block the vent, that small hole in the back of the cannon, and make sure no oxygen is getting down in there as number one is plunging out and ramming the projectile. Part of the fire triangle, or now the fire tetrahedron, trying to keep all those elements separate to not create a fire. You don't want any oxygen standing those flames. In addition to that, she's also going to help the gunner to aim the gun. So she'll be coming back to the trail hand spike, that spike coming off the back, and moving the gun slightly to one side or the other if the gunner requests those minor adjustments. And she'll also be pricking the bag of gunpowder to create an opening for the spark get down in and actually ignite that powder. All right, number four, he is the trigger man. His biggest job, his really only job, is to actually pull the lanyard to ignite the cannon. Now you may have seen a lot of Hollywood depictions of this where you have a fuse that you light, you might even be doing it with a cigar. That's not how they're doing it at the time of the Civil War. They have this little thing called a friction primer. It's about this big, the metal tube, you have gunpowder on the inside and a wire through the top. That wire is what's attached to the lanyard, the long rope. So on the command to fire, what he does is pull that lanyard. That'll rip the wire out. The friction of that, along with that small charge of gunpowder inside the primer, creates the spark, which ignites the powder. That creates the big explosion, which actually fires the gun. Number five has a bag. A bag is to carry the ammunition from the limber chest back here in the back up to the gun. Now, in an actual time of battle, this probably would be further away than we have it today. You would ideally have your limber back behind a hill or some other type of cover in case there are shells that overshoot the gun. You don't want that hitting your limber chest, which is filled with ammunition. So he's going to have to be very in shape, running back and forth, essentially, from the cannon to the limber, bringing up ammunition. You have number six and number seven, who are back here at the limber, and they have to be very well versed in mathematics. Because the gunner, if there's a fused round, one of those case shots or a shell, is going to have to call out a range, calling it out in yards. They're gonna have to use a chart on the limber to determine what that yardage means for the amount of number of seconds going to take for that fuse to explode. So they're cutting down the fuses, getting those fuse rounds ready, and then handing that ammunition off to number five to bring up to the gun. And finally, you have the gunner. Today that's me. I'll be giving the commands. Um, it's also my ultimate responsibility to make sure everyone else is doing their job correctly. Catch any errors as they're happening. Make sure that we correct anything we need to before you put yourself in a dangerous situation. So any questions about how the gun works 